Hi, I'm Matthew Welton, and although I've been writing for, seriously, for like over 25 years, and I'm now, talk, I'm now here to talk about my, my new book, which is my fourth book of poems that have come out, it feels like I'm only just comfortable with the idea of calling myself a poet. Up until now, I've always, I think, thought of myself as a writer, but it always seemed a um, a looser term or perhaps a, a more accurate term that, that accurate because the thing that I could do the thing that I do do is to write I sit down with a pen I put words together um, but looser because writer can apply to you know whatever you're writing whether that's poems or fiction or songs or plays or or even you know perhaps um, text-based visual artwork or something um, but I think I think during the writing of this book, I've eventually felt comfortable with the idea of being a poet, partly because um, I keep writing poems, simply, um, and I've not gone and written, you know, fiction and plays and um, all those kind of things um, that perhaps I always thought I would do. Um, perhaps I've in some ways surprised myself by just continuing to write poems. But in a perhaps kinder way, um, I feel that whatever I write now is poems. Um, I've, I've, and that, that, that might mean that the, some of the poems look like novels, like this new book. Some of the poems look like um, pieces of art. Some of the poems look like songs. Some of the poems look like maths or or you know things that aren't poems whatsoever um but i also think there's a sense in which um i feel very comfortable and proud to belong to what we might think of as the poetry community or part of the poetry communities and um pretty much everybody as near as damn it everybody that i've ever met through poetry has been absolutely lovely and people that I meet in person or these days through the internet, um, there's, a, there's such a sense of support and fellow feeling and of people just interested, um, you know, to use that word, um, seniors, is that Brian Eno's word? The, the idea that, um, you know, it's not about one person being the star of the show, but, um, the star of the show is the scene. The star of the show is that there's lots and lots of people making poems um, in different ways and in ways that, that perhaps for different reasons or that mean different things to them. Um, so for all those reasons, I now feel comfortable as I am here talking about my fourth book to say, yeah, I'm a poet. Question two. Um, it's April 2020, everybody in the country is locked under lockdown. Um, back in the old world, I would say that my favourite place to write is Blend Cafe in Nottingham. Um, it's in a place in Nottingham called Snenton Market and it's in a, um, a bunch of avenues that, that used to be the wholesale fruit and veg market. When I was a kid, my next door neighbour... Um, he, he worked on his family's um, produce farm a couple of miles away from, from where we lived. And you'd hear him getting up at four in the morning to go and, um, you know, get the, the truck full of beetroot and potatoes and peas um, or whatever and take them off to Snenton Market to sell. Um, but, you know, things have changed. That's It's no longer a wholesale market. Um, but like a lot of those former industrial places it's it's a part of nothing that's been beautifully um renovated and there's there's lots of great little shops and businesses and um my favorite is is blend and i very often go in there and drink coffee and sit there with my notebook open at the long bench in the middle of the place um and we'll read poems for an hour or so and then start letting the ideas of what i've read and percolate a little um, and we'll find myself you know either returning to something I've been working on or getting 
new words and phrases for, for something. Um, so who knows how long it'll be before I'm back in blend. Um, question three. Um, what's the last book that I read that blew me away? Um, one of the exciting things about having a book out, and this is something you know, that I never foresaw when I was really young and I thought that what I wanted to do with my life was to write, um, was how exciting it would be to be part of the, of the community, really. And one of the things I never anticipated was the joy of when you've got a book out, of seeing who else has got books out, because, you know, you don't have a book out all the time. I mean, this, this is, it's only three and a half years since my last book came out. And between that book and the previous one, it was seven years. So, I, so I've halved the gap. But um, don't go round imagining that the next one's going to be out in a year and three quarters. It's not going to quite work like that. Um, but um, some of the poets whose books have come out this year, um, Caroline Bird, I think, is very exciting. Sam Riviere's new books just arrived. I'm very excited about that. Um, but the one that perhaps I wasn't necessarily excited about in anticipation, I, I didn't hear about it until it was already out, but which has really blown me away, literally blown me away, is um, Michael Haslam's new book, Ica Brow Trig. Um, and Michael Haslam's a poet that I've enjoyed for a long time but these these new poems which is kind of like the stuff he's written in the last 10 years he's brought together I think um a lot of the stuff that I've always enjoyed about him that he's he's pushing formally he's pushing he's playing with the sounds and the tightness of what he's saying in ways that you know I think it make it fair that we can still think of him as an experimental writer but he's um you know there's so much Wordsworth and Coleridge almost coming up through the through the soil, through the roots of, of Michael Haslam, that um, his poems, which are partly autobiographical, partly about the language, he's, he's very attentive to um, etymology, particularly um, place names. Um, and um, there's, there's also a, a sense of, of place um, that, that he continues to write about the, the part of Yorkshire where he's from and um, there's a, a poem in the book which is addressed to R.F. Langley the Carcanet poet who died in 2011 and I, I knew Roger Langley a little and um, was a massive I've always been a massive admirer of his poems and um, it is very beautiful to find a poem of Michael Haslam's which addresses um, R.F. Langley in general and then and then in general terms and then towards the end to about Haslam's response to to his death um but it's it's an amazing book and it's one that um I've had only had for two or three months but um it's not really been far from my rucksack in those days um, even, even if even if my rucksack doesn't go very far with me these days with my limited exercise etc how did it feel? How did it feel putting this selection together? Um, it's been, I think it's been putting this collection of poems together that has made me finally um, acquiesced, excuse me, has finally made me acquiesce to the idea that, that it's fair enough to call myself a poet. Um, and it's, you know, it's called Squid Squad, a novel. It's perhaps not a conventional novel, but there are, there are characters in it. There's a bunch of characters with names like um, Bradley Ridley and Natalie Chatterley and Neris Harris and Angus Mingus. And they go around doing things like um, cycling through spilled paint and um, thinking about um, the conventions of conversation and the constraints of the conversation of convention or, or whatever. It's lots of kind of pseudo philosophical stuff and I think in putting it together while I wasn't setting out to write a novel as such I was setting out to some extent to to nick a load of things that 
um, happen in novels. So the characters, the dialogue, the um, the events. But what I didn't want to do was to follow an obvious trajectory, a kind of narrative curve, or to have to... Um, I think you often get to the end of a novel and it's like everything's been tidied away and, and the, the cap has been screwed on the on the jar at the end. So I didn't really want that kind of denouement or play out. Um, but I, want, I wanted um, to write something that perhaps had, had the joy of a fiction like Donald Barthelme's to an extent or Richard Brautigan's or, or maybe um, some Lydia Davis stuff or Diane Williams. Um, and to and to show well like um, I don't know like it's it's both poetry and fiction I suppose um, and to feel that um, it was okay to to take what I wanted and I can do all those things and and make it a poem and and um, and I suppose in doing that there's also bits that I've stolen or borrowed from the Peanuts strip by Charles Schultz I always, I always like loved that idea of a gang. Um, and there's also, I suppose, in that that idea of a little gang, um, a lot of the early Hal Hartley films, the shorter ones, like Theory of Achievement, I liked a lot. And basically, it's just um, smart young people um, with lots of ideas, but um, not not very proper jobs. And I'm not really sure what age the characters in Squid Squad are. So in, there's in some ways that they do things that children might do. Um, like um, skipping ropes and um, and saying rhymes, but there's also an extent to which they they do things like spitting out whiskey and filling milk bottles with beer, which um, kids shouldn't really be doing. So, but I like that idea of of not having to explain away what what I was doing in my writing. I suppose I should also mention that there's a there's a second half to the book. It's it's not just the first sixty four poems that comprise Squid Squad a novel, but there's also um, shorter poems um, that address um, I don't know. Like very often they were poems where I was asked to write something. So uh, there's a poem for the the poet Roddy Lumsden who died this year. The poet Lavinia Singer um, was putting together a, a collection of poems for one of his birthdays two or three years ago and asked me to to write something so I wrote that and I, and I wanted to to not just put that poem in that private collection but to preserve it in this book of my own um, there's also um, a poem that I wrote for the centenary publication of W.S. Graham who's a poet that um, I return to and have returned to for a long long time now um, so there's a bunch of things that, that, that seem to be um, addressed again, you know, back to that idea of poetry community uh, addressed to, to poets, whether whether I knew them or not, whether they're, they're you know, they're just people I admire or people I've ever had the, the joy of meeting too. Final question. Um, have I got a favourite poem from this book? Um, I think the one of the things I really enjoy being surprised by in writing is the way that... Um, you write a poem, you put it in a book and it goes off and has a life of its own. And some people, you know, like um, it's poetry. I'm in no danger of getting famous or becoming a household name. But but people who read poems tend to read them with some commitment, with some seriousness. And um, part of the joy has been I, I write stuff and, you know, some some of the poems I've written have ended up being incorporated into works of art or being set to music. In particular, there's a composer called Larry Goves, who, um, who's become a good friend, but we met, first of all, through um, the idea of collaborating. Um, and very often I write something and have no idea what interesting things are going to happen to it. Um, there's a set of three poems in this book called Green Gage, Blues Scale and Blacklist, which are in the form of, um, of mark schemes that you might have used if you're a, um, a teacher or a a lecturer or, or perhaps if you're a student trying to work out how to how to um, get a, the grade that you want and, and looking at and it and basically it was, it was a set of playful poems where instead of looking at um, excellence in writing essays or understanding of literature or history or 
maths or geography or whatever was was the idea of greenness and blueness and blackness so um, in its grades and its definitions and its exemplars um, this this set of three poems considers you know in in the green one it's things like Cavallo Nero and the colour of the of the wicket at Headingley or the wicket at Trent Bridge or the wicket at Lords or um, the colour of of um, the green of, of red wine bottles or the, the colour of, of bruising around the black eye um, and though those poems they were written actually on a on an Arvon course that I did that was led by um, Thomas A. Clark and Jen Hadfield and it was in response to one of Tom's exercises where he just looked at us and said off you go think about green um, and it produced lots of ideas um, but that, those poems got published, first of all, in Paratext Journal that's edited by the poets Laura Elliott and Angus Sinclair. And then they got taken up by um, Teaching English Journal that's edited by a guy called Gary Snapper. Um, a friend of the poet, Sue Dimmock, sort of grabbed hold of that and said, this should go in a teaching magazine. And they've also appeared in the, in the Vanguard anthology that the, the poet and, and fiction writer Richard Skinner edits. So already those poems have have had a life of their own so I'm very excited hopefully that they'll they'll um, be received in in new ways um, when they make their way into their world via this new book of mine Squid Squad.